Mark Briscoe promo calls the House of, Bl- House of Black. He's not afraid of them. Me, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, we are violent men. You should be afraid of us. Tony Savani. Mark Briscoe was great. Thunder Rosa was also great. Tony Savani interviews Thunder Rosa. First, she is perfect, as they say, white meat babyface. She thanks the people for making your comeback so special. Thanks us all in the building on TBS, on TNT, watching their shows all over the world. Now... She likes to do things on her own. She doesn't need help, Deanna. She got her degree by herself, got U.S. citizenship by herself, all the social work she did by herself, got here to EW all by herself. Doesn't need Deanna's help. As for you, Antonia, which took me a minute to realize she's talking about Tony Storm, but that's what she called her. (laughs) They were once a tag team known as Thunderstorm, which I had forgotten. Had to take time off to heal, lost her title. She has another opportunity at Dynasty. I didn't leave here because I couldn't carry the weight of the title. I will carry the pride of my people, the support of my family, and if I have to break every bone in my body to empower every woman in the locker room, that's what I'll do. You try to take my face paint off. You don't want to see what's underneath my mask. You can't kill what is already dead. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for the title. I'm going to drag your soul to hell. As Brian likes to say, that escalated quickly. She Mm -hmm. went from thanking fans for their support to threatening to drag someone's soul to hell. A lot going on here. It's, it's funny. She said, you don't want to see what's under my face paint. And uh, then she started wiping it off. Yeah. yeah well. So do we or don't we? Well, we don't, we don't want to see it. But she's, we, we don't want her to take the face paint off. So. Okay. But uh, that was a great promo. That was an awesome, awesome promo. It, it was. Yes. It was. And then we have a pre-taped Deanna Parazzo rebuttal. If she can't get her hands on one Tony Storm, she will take the other. So she's calling up Mariah May, and she's going to break her arm. That's mean. So it seems to have escalated quickly. And then things continue to escalate quickly. They did this whole tournament. Sting lost what? It was about a month since Sting lost and retired. These belts have been vacant. Correct. And they announced a tournament. They put a wacky brackets that made no sense. They got it all done. We're down to two teams. They showed wacky footage from all in. All of this. And then out of nowhere, on collision, eight days before the match. Oh, hey, FTR versus the Young Bucks is a ladder match now. Right. Okay, then. That seems unplanned. You know, sometimes you need a stipulation, like in the uh, the case of the uh, the world title, or I'm sorry, the uh, trick trick mellow match and yes. on, on NXT. You needed a stip there. I don't think this needed a stip. Yeah, you could have just fine without it. Yeah, there's a lot a lot, a lot of overbooking here. They did not need a stip. They did not need. Footage from backstage footage from a show from eight months ago to give us to care. No, they did not. It is two great teams uh, fighting for the vacant titles. One of them will be the first three-time champions ever. This is all well and good on its own. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm, no, I no, it'll be awesome. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be great, but uh, it's a little unnecessary. Yeah, it would have been awesome without the ladder. Right. Hobbs and Fletcher do a promo on Danielson and Castagnoli. Actually, Fletcher. To correct myself, it's mostly talking about next week and Will Ospreay and this and that. Hobbs wants to focus on tonight. We're expecting a heavy fine, he says. But when we're done here, Brian Danielson will not be able to walk on his own. And so the match is Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli versus Kyle Fletcher and Will Hobbs. Here is where they announce on Dynamite, it'll be the Young Bucks and Okada versus Pac and Penta and Daniel Garcia. So they're doing something, which I'm very happy about. Why did they not announce that match during his match or right after his match? Why do they wait an hour? So got lost, almost lost in the shelf here. So this is one of those classic collision main event tag matches. We got 30 minutes. Let's just use them all. Mm-hmm. They just wrestled a long ass time for a long, long. There's a long heat segment on Claudio. We had two commercial breaks in between the two commercials. It was mostly the heat on Claudio. And I was confused because the expressed goal of the uh, Don Callis family here was to injure Brian Danielson going into his match against uh, Will Ospreay at Dynasty. You can't injure him if he's on the apron and his partner's in the ring. That's right. So I was a little perplexed by this. Now they had plenty of time. Eventually, Danielson did tag in. They're brawling on the floor. Apparently, there's a false count anywhere match. And uh, when they came back for commercial, they didn't have the heat on Brian. For a little bit, at least. 
Uh, Claudio gets a hot tag. He's elbowing everyone to death. Gets the giant swing on Powerhouse Hobbs, who is, in fact, a giant. And we have Hobbs trying to use a chair on Danielson. Stefan Smith takes it away. The heels prep the announce desk to try to put Danielson through the table. Claudio saves from that. Hits a running, diving Rana off the table. Claudio is a big dude. That's awesome. A very large luchador here. And he throws Fletcher into the ring and it pins him with a neutralizer. I have more to say about Kyle Fletcher here momentarily. But uh, so the Blackpool Combat Club wins. And in the end there, it took them 29 out of 30 minutes. But in the end, the Don Callis family was in fact trying to injure Brian Danielson. But it did not get done. And so Kanosuke Takeshita attacks. It's three on two. I understand Moxley's busy, even though the crowd was chanting for him. Is Wheeler Yuta hurt? Was he not around to make the um, save? I they had a report on him uh, like two weeks ago. I and suppose so. Then he's got he's got something. He they said Dave said he couldn't fly. Oh, so well, all right. that's not good. No, that sucks. That's not good at all. It sucks real bad. Okay, well that's that's that's. that's they could have explained that. It, they could have, all they had to say was Wheeler you does not here tonight, or something. But yeah, but they did not, and so it's three on two, and then the. Injury that Brian Danielson suffers that will wound him going to next week's match against Will Ospreay. Takeshi gives it a brain buster on the ramp. Looked awesome. Mm-hmm. But I got to say, it would have looked, looked a lot more awesome if three hours prior, because I watched these shows back to back, I had not seen John Silver do a brain buster to Orange Cassidy on the floor. And That's Orange fair. came back to win that match 10 minutes later. So, yeah, got to think of the ent- the whole show needs to be thought of when you're putting this stuff together. So... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, poor Kyle Fletcher got in a fight with the pretty black bats at ringside and lost. <laughs> I forgot about this that. This poor son of a gun, he, he rips up the mats. He's going to pile drive uh, Danielson, correct? It doesn't matter. He's he was going to, he, he he was trying to pile t- drive one of the, he's going to pile drive one of the good guys. And, yes. And the mat slowly falls back down. And so he yells at Hobbs, and Hobbs comes over, and hes you would think he was just going to hold the mat. No, no. Hobbs propped it back up in the exact same spot. He goes to do the move, and here come the mat. It, at glacier speed, comes back down and falls. And so Kyle's like, you know, screw it. He turns around, and he gets backdropped, <laughs> which was going to happen anyway. Yeah. But, oh, my gosh, the comedy, the unintentional comedy is so great. The, the pretty black mats went into business for themselves. They sure did. Yeah. All right. Now let's talk about this Kyle Fletcher. Did you know he's the Ring of Honor TV champion? I did. And he's been Ring of Honor on the show TV champion for a long time. Did you know that unless you're one of the, let's be honest, hundreds of people watching, maybe it might be thousands, I suppose, but it's uh, mm-hmm. far fewer that are watching EW TV. But they, unless sure. you're one of the small crowd watching Honor Club every week, then uh, you don't ever see him win. Like ever. Fair. So I did yeah. the I, I did the research, I did the math. Uh Kyle Fletcher has lost seven of his last nine AW matches, which doesn't sound terrible. It's not good. But uh the names he beat, and there's a lot here for two matches because they were trios and tag matches, but the names he beat Hunter Gray, Paul Titan, who? Jaw C. J A H dash C Jaw C. Irish guy. Kit Sackett and <laughs> Rennie D. I'm not making any of those up. Those are taken straight wow. from uh, Pro Fight DB is where I found those. So I was searching for it. Has he, when was the last time he beat uh, uh, anyone who mattered on EWTV? E- uh, Boulder of the uh, Bear Country slash Iron Savages, whatever they are, uh, whichever they are. Okay. He beat okay. Boulder on October 14th. That's, remember, December, May, May, March. Yeah. Six months ago. That is six months ago. And before that, if you if you don't want to count him, and I don't mean if you don't, he was part of a, an eight-man tag. Aussie Open and absolutely big. Beat FTR and Danielson and Yuta in September. It has been seven months since AEW fans mm. have seen Kyle Fletcher pin anyone of note. And the only thing that he's done of note has had a great match with Will Ospreay that some people say got too much in that match yeah (laughs) 
That's one. That's one yeah. of the the shining example. Where Osprey should be more selfish. You you can yeah. kill a guy. You can slaughter a guy who's only capable of beating Jossie, Kit Sackett, and Renny D. It's okay to pin that guy in three minutes. Yeah, and I come to think of it, that was Nate Mantag. I don't even know who got the pin there. Since Fletcher actually pinned someone, it could have been even before that. So, and with all of that said, Kyle Fletcher is awesome. He's awesome, but he's on AEW TV. He is a geek, which makes the Ring yeah. of Honor TV Championship look like a geek, which makes beating Kyle Fletcher not do anything for people who beat him because everyone beats him. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. It, it, it's just, there, there's a lot of 50 50 booking in the show. And a guy who should be winning at least 50% 50 of the time is not. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.